Uh, my name is Saul Perlmutter, and I'm a professor of physics at the University of California, Berkeley. And I just gave a, a session where I described the, the work that we've been doing uh, to the uh, participants here. Um, when I was interested particularly in the fact that we're at an unusual moment in history uh, where we're getting at some very deep fundamental questions about how the, the world is put together, how the universe works. And, but um, it's a, one of these also rare times when you can actually understand how the measurements <laughs> led us to this conclusion, how we measure the history of the expansion of the universe and, uh, and discovered that actually the universe is doing something very strange. It's, uh, it's speeding up in its expansion when you would have thought that gravity would have slowed it down. Sort of down. So, what I was uh, trying to get across a little bit was a sense in which there are some uh, very deep things that are easily understood and, and, and explained. But I also want to convey a little bit about um, this sense that we are still at a time in history where we're learning very basic things about how the world works. And I, uh, at the end, was asked a question about, you know, how does this relate to the things that we're doing around us, around here today? And I was saying that what's been surprising is how when you learn something very deep about how the world works, it tends to make you more capable in the world, more powerful in the world, and more able to address problems in the world. And we have no idea why that works. We've no idea why, oh, for example, Einstein's theory of general relativity, which is one of the most abstract uh, you know, fundamental theories that you can imagine that seems to have nothing to do with the world around us. And yet, we would not be able to use GPS. We wouldn't be able to land airplanes with a, with a you know, global positioning satellites um, without knowing Einstein's theory of general relativity and, and getting the numbers right. And so I would say that uh, one of the things that we're very excited about is that sense that when that we have a chance to keep moving ahead as a civilization and uh, learning about the world that we live in, and it makes you optimistic about the things that you might be able to do in the world. At the same time, I also pointed out that this project was one that we thought would take us, it uh, was going to be very difficult, it would take us three years to do. In the end, it took us 10 years to do. And yet, um, none of us were disappointed that it took us 10 years. It was a very good use of time. But what it does remind us is that the, some of the most interesting questions in the world, the most interesting problems in the world, are difficult enough problems that you're going to spend a number of years working on them. You won't get it right the first try or the second try or the third try. And that when we address the problems that we're all discussing here at Davos, you really have to come at them with a slightly longer range picture that we're going to keep working on them until we get them right. And that they're, they're great problems and they, we, you can't be frustrated if after a year or so you haven't solved those problems. So that was a, that was a part of what was going on today at this session.